So here in BC, one of the, the as you know, I, I have dealt a lot of uh, ministry and, and government kind of agencies and organizations. Um, and one of the things that I have said all along and through COVID that that um, having kids that have been come through the system, they, they tend to challenge, uh, have a lot of challenges regarding anxiety, et cetera. So what do you see or do you see or do you hear um, about mental health, because I think in this time next year, we are going to see a shoe drop like you have never seen before. Uh, and you can see it, you know, there's the Facebook posts about rants and raves and all those kinds of things in small pockets. I think we're in for a huge trouble. What do you see uh, directly or indirectly related to COVID potentially happening around mental health? Sure. Um, I think... I, I think something that distinguishes Japan and 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 perhaps Asian cultures is is uh, you know the, those those sorts of things aren't really talked about and uh, and I think that um, we we do know that there has been a change there's been a cultural shift in in Japan in general as as the younger generation kind of breaks away from that kind of traditional model that can be quite limiting. Right. Um, and, and, you know, uh, in terms of mental health in Japan, really what you hear mostly around that, uh, you know, pre pre pandemic is, is around, you know, the, the, you know, they have a term for working yourself to death. Right. And the stress and the anxiety, you know, of, of young people um, needing to perform, academically in school um you know uh in school you either you either you either excel academically or it's determined very quickly that you're not academically inclined and you need to go more of a, a blue collar um hands-on wow. trades yeah. Rate. Yeah. um and, and 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 that's a whole nother show that we sure, can talk absolutely. about you know how how that in itself affects mental health and mental well-being and what that does to, to the psyche of the people who, sure. who are raised in that, in that environment. Yep. Um, uh, and, and, and in Tokyo, what we're seeing is, is uh, a huge cultural shift in that, uh, you know, Gen X, millennials, Gen Y, they're, they're not interested in families. They're not interested in relationships. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the fact uh, that, that they, they spend most of their time at work. Um, and when they're not at work, uh, you know, it's very common for everyone to leave work and go out as a group. Your, your social circle is who you work with. And that's after work, you go out to the pub and you drink yourself silly and relieve the stress and have a laugh with your coworkers. Yeah. You, you, you go home simply to sleep. And at five or six in the morning, you're back up and back at it. So it's a, so mental health is something that, uh, is very much an issue in Japan. It's not something that, as a as a culture, as a society, that they that they necessarily choose to deal with or address right. or, or talk about. In terms of COVID, again, there hasn't been a huge, my perspective, there hasn't been a huge effect on the population itself. Um, I think in Tokyo where there has been more of a, a, a request um, for people to stay in. You know, a lot of people in Tokyo live in a three or 400 square foot sure. you know, little, yeah. little apartment. Um, so, you know, sitting and staring at those four walls for, for weeks on end um, has to do something uh, to your psyche. I think, uh, you know, in terms of schools, uh, Japan was one of the first countries to shut down schools almost immediately. Um, the government took a lot of heat um, for making that decision very quickly, but it was, you know, early March 
all schools in Japan were shut down and schools started to come back online in about May. Um, and uh, I know the schools here uh, in our prefecture, well, in our city, um, they, they kept going right up until they only have a one month summer vacation. That's July. Uh, and then they were right back to school. Uh, they actually cut <laughs> in order to make up for the lost time back in March. Uh, mo that one month summer vacation in a lot of places was cut back. Some of the kids only, some of the schools were only closed for a week for summer vacation, um, okay. which, you know, you know, summer in Japan, you know, we had five or six weeks where every day was above 30 degrees and, you know, 90% humidity. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of the older schools don't have air conditioning. So there were news reports of, you know, the teachers having to deal with, you know, not just COVID and trying to keep, you know, the, the students safe and the staff safe from the virus, but also dealing with the heat. There was heat stroke um, was, was a big deal within the schools itself. Uh, and, and then just that, that whole idea of, you know, these kids really haven't had a break yeah. and, uh, and, and they're, and they're stressed out. So it's, uh, it's, <sighs> I don't think that we're going to hear about mental health uh, effects the way we're going to hear about them in North America, especially sure. in Canada, where where we have evolved to a point where we can, when we can talk, talk about, about mental yeah. health and address it head on. I don't think we're going to hear about it. Um, and and in terms of you know the the long lasting underlying effects, again, the Japanese people just seem to be able to roll with it, roll with it, yeah, and and, well, and adapt. Awesome. Uh, so so just on the a uh, note before before we go. Um, when, any plan on when you're going to uh, come home? Well, that's the interesting. I've said that's the interesting thing many times because this whole experience has been very, very interesting to say the least. Uh, but with regards to to my ability to stay in Japan, uh, Canadian citizens are able to stay in Japan on a short on a temporary visitor visa permit. Uh, for up to 90 days at a time right um, and then and then there's there's only a requirement to leave the country and re-enter there's no requirement that you have to be out for a certain amount oh, of time okay um, and there is and I haven't found it written anywhere but what we've been kind of advised is that once you spend six months, within a calendar year in the country, you know, your two 90 day stints. Sure. Your, your third time in that year, they're going to start asking some questions. Yeah. So, so historically we've been sensitive to that, you know, you know, coming into the country twice and spending up to 90 days per time. Uh, what's been interesting this time when, when I, when I landed in, in, uh, in March, uh, you know, my reason for coming over other than, you know, to, to be with, and, and to enjoy my time here, uh, we were we were launching our tour company in 2020, ah, okay. and so we had our first tours of northern Japan booked for April. So my plan was to be in Japan mid March to mid May. We were going to do some tours, and then we were going to work on developing some other tours. So doing that kind of research of of developing the tours themselves. The tour, of course, in April was canceled. Um, uh, with, you know, we, we actually chose to cancel it even before the borders closed, just be, just because of safety. And at that time, the, the federal government in Canada was asking people not, not to travel and to, and to stay home. Yeah. Um, so then I was due out of, of Japan mid May, uh, when we saw, I mean, Japan, when I was set to leave, was in, Japan was in a state of emergency and they were asking people not to travel around the, the, the country. So okay. I extended, I changed my flight to the very last day that my visa would allow me, which was June 17th. Extended it there with the idea that, hey, I've got an extra month. That's kind of cool. Uh, we get closer to June 17th. Things were better, better here but still not great over there. And, and really what was I going home to? Right. You know, I yeah. work in events. I work in travel. Those were the first to go and they'll be the last to come back. So really what was I going back to? So we decided to apply for an extension to my, my temporary visitor visa. Uh, and we thought that process, like most things in Japan would take weeks. 
Um, we were told on the phone it could take up to a few hours. In fact, it took 20 minutes for oh, them wow. to approve my stay. So they nice. in June, they extended my stay for another 90 days, which led me to mid-September. Uh, again, we had it in our minds that we would just kind of ride it out and see kind of where things were at, you know, a couple of weeks before uh, my date to leave. Uh, and again, you know, we got to the end of August and that's when the numbers started going up, you know, around the world, around the you world. Know, yeah. The start of the second wave uh, as, as you might say. So uh, again, you know, looking forward into the fall, really, what was I going back to? Um, uh, you know, as we go into the fall, people are going to be shut in a little bit more. There's going to be more contact of people indoors where we know the virus, uh, likes to spread. So we said, you know what, it's, it's highly unlikely and it, it almost never happens that they, you know, obviously, you know, to extend it means that now you're in Japan for six months and that's kind of the limit. Yeah. yeah. So. But, but we said, you know what, let's see what happens. So we went in again uh, to the office and uh, presented all the same documentation that we had presented back in June. And uh, this time it was about 15 minutes for them to approve it. So I've now, uh, I'm on my second uh, temporary visitor visa extension, which now takes me into mid-December. When, when the immigration officer uh, approved that extension, uh, the only real advice we were given was that um, I was to return to Canada when it was safe to do so. Oh. Uh, when we left the office, I asked, I asked Yosuke, so is there a definition of safe? How are we defining safe? Uh, does safe mean there's a vaccine? Does safe mean the pandemic has been declared over? Does safe mean the global travel advisory has been lifted? Right. What does safe mean? And what are the chances it's going to be safer to go back to Canada in December right. than it yeah. is today? So yeah. uh, we, we, we're, we're taking it kind of, we're living life 90 days at a time right now. <laughs> um, but but we, we kind of have a feeling that, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've now seen three seasons yeah. in Japan. I might get to experience all four seasons in Japan because of the pandemic. So, it, um, yeah. So, well, which is, hey, one of the good things about the pandemic, right? Now, the question is, is what do you have to do or, or what is the process for you to live there? Uh, uh, that's the great dilemma, Russell. Um, yeah. As you know, uh, in 2018, Yosuke and I made the decision that we were going to kind of wrap things up in, in terms of our lives in Canada and make the move over here to Japan. Uh, the great motivating factor was that we were going to, to be uh, able to care for and, and, and you know, assist Yosuke's grandmother uh, as, as she was moving into her eighties, into her, you know, her elder stages of life. Yeah. Uh, and, and so we were fully prepared. Uh, our goal was to, to settle here permanently and to start our tour business here and, and to, to live our life here. Uh, huh. We knew coming in that uh, marriage equality hasn't quite caught up in Japan. Sure, um, that'll not be a whole for the, different not, show. Exactly, and yeah. and just to touch on, not for the same reasons as a lot of places. You know, there's no hate or discrimination necessarily. It just hasn't. It just hasn't become a national conversation where Japanese people have sure. have 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 fought for their rights for marriage equality. Uh, so we knew that you know getting a spousal visa was probably not going to happen. So we had other ideas, you know, uh, I'm very entrepreneurial and, 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 and we knew that we wanted to start a business. So, so we explored what that might look like. Uh, unfortunately, you know, yes, yes. While well, it's possible to, to get a, 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 you know, a longer term visa to, to run a business in Japan, uh, they want to see a huge capital, uh, investment in that. In other yeah. words, uh, you need to have some money in the bank. 
Sure. Uh, and even that doesn't guarantee it. So, uh, you know, we kind of blew our resources just to get here and to, and to try and start a new life here. So that wasn't able, you know, getting, uh, getting a, uh, most, most people, foreigners will come here on a student visa right. and, uh, you know, if I'm going to live in Japan, I should speak the language. Uh, but in order to enroll in a, in a, in an educational program that would allow me to apply for a student visa, I need, it's not about learning the ABCs of Japanese. It's about having a foundation and becoming proficient in Japanese. So right. I've got a long way to go before I can go the student visa route. Um, and huh, unfortunately, uh, a work visa is also not difficult to get. Uh, and I have been offered a here uh, in Japan teaching English. We have friend, a friend from actually from Idaho uh, who, who came here 13 years ago as a Japanese, uh, 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 an English teaching assistant in the schools, a very common program here. Uh, he's opened up, him and his wife Kaori have opened up a, uh, a private English school um, just in the next city over. And he offered me a job and was willing to sponsor me uh, to get a visa, a work visa to stay. Uh, Japan is happy to give a work visa to anybody who has a university degree. Uh -uh. And, uh, you know, uh, I entered university very young and, uh, and kind of went the young, foolish, let's party rather than study. So I never completed my, my degree. And so I don't have the paperwork that will allow me to get a work permit either. So huh, it's going to be a long time yeah. before I qualify, um, t before I can even fill out an application that will allow me to stay longer than, than, you know, 90 days at a time. So wow. uh, it's, it, we, we've, We've worked to adapt over the, the last few years. You know, I'm a bit of a homeboy anyway. So, so going back and forth doesn't, doesn't upset me. And in, in fact, that kind of excites me to be able to have kind of a, a trans-Pacific lifestyle. Right. But I need to be able to work to, to, to pay for that travel back and forth. Sure. That's, yeah. what, that's what the travel business was all about. Um, we launched the travel business in a really bad year. Oh, so uh, welcome so, to my world, brother. Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, so you know, the dream is still alive, Russell. Um, yeah. uh, we we've actually again another silver lining is is we're we've been working for the last six or seven months to really make sure that our travel business is strong and ready, and the foundation is there so that when it is safe to travel again, that we're ready. We know that there's a lot of people who have, you know, this pent up desire yeah. to travel and to get oh. on a plane and see the world. And, and so Yosuke and I have just said, this is our opportunity to really be ready for that. So the long-term goal, I mean, the long, long-term goal is, you know, marriage equality comes to Japan and I get a spousal visa and perhaps sure. I can spend you know, maybe, maybe my fifties or sixties can be spent in Japan. Um, um, but in terms of the next 10 years, you know, uh, things don't move fast. Um, uh, it's, you know, so, so the, the, the medium term goal is to establish that travel company so that we can go back and forth. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we're, we're, uh, COVID COVID is, uh, is leading the way on that. Unfortunately. Yes. Okay. Well, listen, anytime you get over here, stop in and see us and, uh, Daryl and I will be happy to be, I'm not sure your first customers, but we will certainly, uh, love to come over and, and visit, uh, Japan, uh, it, from from some of the photos that you have sent us and 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 we've been witness to see on your Facebook page, it is an amazing place to see, um, and you always speak uh, and write about it so eloquently and and uh, with passion for sure. So thank you so much for being on my show. I so much appreciate it. I I wish both of you lots of love. You know I care about you both immensely, and um, be well and be safe. Thank you very much, Russell. It was a, a great opportunity and a huge honor to be invited to be on your show. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Yeah, bye-bye.